It's nearly impossible to explain the benefits of Tanstack Router in one video. I mean, look at all of these key features. It's got full type safety, prefetching, it's designed for data loading from tools like Tanstack Query, and much, much more. So in the interest of not making this a 10 hour long video, I'm gonna try to pick out my favorite bits and also the core features. If you haven't heard of Tanstack Router before, where have you been? It is the ultimate router for full type safety, brought to you by Tanstack, who are slowly taking over the TypeScript ecosystem with awesome type safe libraries that are brilliant at what they do. Maybe just one more. You've probably already heard of Tanstack Query, which is pretty much the way to go for data loading in React now. It's almost becoming the standard. But I think a lot of people also forget that Tanstack libraries work with other frameworks as well. In this case, the router works with React and Solid. So let's jump into a demo and start exploring what it has to offer. Now I'm actually gonna start this video a little bit backwards. I wanna show you one of the benefits that you get when you have a fully type safe router. One of the easiest places to see that is within the link component. So you can see I have a link from Tanstack router and it's trying to link to the subscribe page. The problem is I don't have that page within my application. Tanstack router is actually telling me that by throwing an error on the to field. It says subscribe is not assignable and then it has a load of different types. This is because it's all fully type safe. So if I try to type in another URL here, you can see that we also get autocomplete since it has that type safety. So these are all of the paths that I've set up within my application. You can see we have the slash page for the home page, dashboard, demo, posts, and then we even have ones that have parameters as well. If I go ahead and select one of the ones that has the parameters, you can see now the link component itself is throwing an error. That's because it's expecting some parameters to be passed through. If we go ahead and actually pass them in, you can see I'm now passing in a parameter of a post ID and that's expecting it to be a string. So now the link component is going to work. The link component even has full type safety when it comes to your search parameters as well. So you can see at the moment I'm linking to the dashboard page. Now that actually takes in some search parameters. So if I go ahead and add them in, you can see that the time range value here knows that it can only be 30 days, three months, seven days or undefined. We can see if I put in an invalid option here, it would go ahead and throw an error and say that isn't a valid search parameter that that page expects. So hopefully you can see why having full type safety across all of your router is so awesome. And I think the link component is one of the easiest ways to show that off. There are so many other benefits of this though. One of the cool things about that link component being type safe is that if you were to refactor your application, maybe change some of the search parameters or even the routes themselves, you know that every single link within your application is gonna go to the right place and not an old URL. With that bit of context then, let's take a look at how we actually set up the application to have full type safety and some of the other really cool features of Tanstack Router. I guess a good first place to start would be how do we actually define our routes? Well, in Tanstack Router, you can have two ways of doing this. You can do the code-based routing or you can do file-based routing. In my case, I like the file-based system. You can see here in my application, I have the index.tsx within the routes folder, and this is just going to be the homepage for my website. Dashboard.tsx is going to be slash dashboard. Then we can also have a folder based system. So within the post folder, I have index.tsx, that'll be slash post. And then the post ID here is a dynamic parameter. So this will be slash post and then whatever the post ID is going to be. There are actually so many ways that you can actually set up the file based routing. I'll pop up a screenshot from that documentation now. You can also see within my application, I have two API routes and one of them is api.auth. This will be slash api slash auth and the other one api demo slash api slash demo. It's just really useful if you only have a few nested routes. Maybe you don't want to create a folder for each one. You can use the dot notation pattern instead. Now, if we go into one of those routes, you'll notice we have a route definition. This just defines the file route itself. And then we also have the component that we're rendering for that page. In this case, it's just rendering the app. You need this for all of the routes that we have in order to take advantage of the full type safety. Now you might be thinking this will be annoying to create for each one, but if we go ahead and add in a new page like demo.tsx, you can see that the Tanstack dev server is actually going to add in that code for me. So we have the create file route slash demo, that was all generated for me. And if I typed something wrong in here, it would go ahead and let me know that it doesn't match what it's expecting from the file based routing anyway. So it's sort of holding your hand there to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. That's literally all of the setup that I need to do for a route. And now slash demo will be available on my link with that full type safety. Now, what about the path parameters? So how do we get to slash post and then a post ID? Can we do any validation on the post ID? We can see here, if we go ahead and extract the post ID using the use params hook, this is going to be a string since all URLs are strings, but we can actually use Tanstack to pass this. So we go to our user ID function. I've actually done that within here. On the route definition, you pass in a params object and then you can have a pass option. In the pass option, you just run the pass that you want. And in my case, I'm using Zod. So I take in the user ID, which is a string, and I make sure with Zod that it can actually be a number. Now, if this validation were to fail, it would actually go to the error component that we can set up within Tanstack Router. However, if it passes, later on when we go to use our params, 
now user ID is always going to be a number so that we know later down the line we don't need to do any more validation on that itself. It's been handled by the pass function of the router. We can see this in action on the demo site here. You can see at the moment I'm trying to load in users and then slash a string here and it's resulting in an error page. If we went ahead and corrected that and tried to load in the user of one, which is going to be a number, you can see that we're just seeing the user page for that user. So we've got our type safe route now and then also the path parameters. But what about those search parameters? Well, for that, you can use pretty much any popular validation library. In my dashboard page here, I define a dashboard search schema using Zod. And this is simply an object that takes in pagination and time range. Time range can either be these values. And if it can't pass it into one of these values, it's going to fall back to 3M. And it's also going to have a default for 3M if it's not provided. You can see pagination in here as well is actually using another schema. So the pagination search query is actually going to be an object. And that's because these search parameters also support JSON. It'll be able to pass an object as a search query. We can see later down is when we go ahead and use these on the use search object. Since we set up our defaults, it knows that these are always going to be available. So it's not going to be undefined or anything like that. We don't have to do any weird type coercion. We're always going to have access to our pagination and time range since we know what the default values are going to be. When we then use this in a link as well, you can see we can provide a partial search parameter. In this case, we're simply just changing the time range to 30 days. And again, this is going to be well typed. So it knows that it can either take the 3M, 30 days, seven days, or be undefined, in which case we're just not giving it a search parameter. With that on our demo app here, you can see in the time range, if I change it from last three months to last 30 days, our time range up in the URL changes. And the same when we go to seven days and back. If I was then to modify the time range here to something completely random and hit enter, you can see that it's always going to fall back to what I had as that catch value, which is going to be the three months. You can also see my pagination here is actually an object. Now, I probably wouldn't do this in practice as it just looks weird to a user. And you can see in the URL that that is actually URL encoded as well. Now, if I were to change the page size here to 50 and then also change it to page two, you can see up here that the search parameter has changed. The page index is one since it started on zero and we have our page size of 50. So now when we refresh, everything looks the same. We're using the URL as state and it is the ultimate state manager. That's a quick glance at the type safety you get for all of your routes then. But what about our data loading options? Here at my post ID path, where I want to load in a specific post, you can see that in my route definition here, I have a loader. This is going to load in our data. This can take in the params for the path. In this case, it's going to be the post ID as a string. And then we can simply pass that to whichever data loading function that we have. In my case, it's this fetch post function. Then what we have up here is if the post isn't valid, we can throw it to a not found component. So if it can't find a post with that post ID, it's going to render in this not found component. Then when we want to use this data later on in any of our components, we can simply use the loader data from the slash post post ID route. And then our post here is going to have all of the information that we expect. Now this use loader data hook is actually another way that you can define things. But you can also just import it from the route itself. If you do route.useLoaderData, then you don't have to specify where you want the loaded data from because it knows which route that you imported. So there's actually multiple ways that you can use these hooks. And that applies to the use params hook as well. You can use that from syntax and all of the other hooks that you use on the route object. It's genuinely crazy. If you check out the documentation, there are just tons of ways that you can do things to match the pattern that you're going to like. Now, personally, I don't like doing any data loading in React that isn't using React Query. So luckily for me, TanStack Router works really well with TanStack Query. I mean, you probably could have seen that coming considering they're both from TanStack. What we have here is a get context function that simply returns the query client that we have from React Query. Then when we define our router, we can actually pass through a context option and this context is going to be available to all of the routes later on. So we go to a route where I'm using React Query. In my case, it's the user ID one. You can see inside of my loader here, alongside the params that we can extract, we can also extract the query client that we can use from React Query. But then a really cool pattern that we can do inside of our loader is instead of returning any data from the loader, we don't want to use that, we want to use React Query, we can simply say query client dot ensure query data. What this is going to do in React Query is it's going to check if we have any data in the cache related to that query. And if we don't, it's going to start fetching the data. This essentially just gives our route a head start. Then later when we want to use any data in our routes, we can just fall back to using React Query itself. So we can say use suspense query here and then the normal React Query that we would do. This way it's going to load in the data up here, but then use it down here. What's really cool as well is all TanStack routes are wrapped in suspense anyway. So we can use a suspense query here. And if it takes a long time to load in the data, it will use your pending component. 
back on my demo site then, if we take a look at those data loading options in action, if I go to posts here and then load in a specific post, you can see that if I was to get the ID completely wrong, so it would throw not found, we're thrown to the page not found. Then if I go to my users here, we're going to see a loading state since I added in an artificial two second delay to the React query data fetch. You can see if I was to refresh the page so it's not actually in the cache here, we're seeing the skeleton there, which was the loading component that I defined. Then we can click around here and this is all using React query now. So that was a quick flyby tour of why I love Tanstack Router. That full type safety just gives you complete confidence in the apps you build, but it even means that you get a better editor experience as you get autocomplete across the board. It's mostly focused on the routes and the data loading, but I want to quickly shout out some other features from that documentation as there is so much more to explore. First, there's a super easy way to turn on automatic code splitting, so you don't need to do any of it manually or any additional setup. And if you do want manual code splitting, you can actually use dot notation on your path. So you can do your path name, dot lazy, and now this route is lazy loaded. If we go back to our super powerful link component, it can actually take in active props and this is what props it should have if it is active. So in most cases, it's probably going to be the class name that you want to display when they're currently already on the page. But you can actually use active options to define how strict this should be. Do you want it to be exact? Do you want it to include hashes? Include the search parameters and more. Links even have the option to be preloaded. If we head back to our loader, there's actually a before load option that you can define on your routes. And this is a function that will be called before the route is loaded. It actually receives all of the same arguments that the loader function does, but it's a great place to check if the user is authenticated to redirect them back to a login page before any of the route components starts to render in. And last but definitely not least, there is also TAN stack star. This is that full stack framework, and it means that you get SSR, streaming, server functions, and possibly even one day, TAN stack flavored server components. There we go, that is a quick tour of Tanstack Router. Will you use it one day? If not, let me know what your favorite framework is in the comments down below. While you're down there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.